Welcome back to Get Fit Guy, Coach Kevin Don here. And this week I had the pleasure of the social media algorithms bombarding me with more unusual information. They've clearly learned that I'm into learning about and implementing healthy living strategies and therefore send me everything that's trending in that space. This week, I saw a well-known fitness influencer selling a sticker that goes on your phone to protect you from EMF. Looking further into his posts, there was a lot of what looked to be fear-mongering around 5G and EMF signals in the home. However, as always, I decided to do some research on both sides of this and pass the information on to you before either of us rush out to buy a $1,600 box that counteracts the invisible rays, minus, of course, the 10% off if you use your favorite influencer's code, of course. As always, let's start with some background. What exactly is EMF? Well, it's an acronym for electromagnetic fields. These are areas of energy, often called radiation, that run on a spectrum. On the far left of the spectrum, we have longer and and less intense waves, like radio waves that runs through to television signals, radar signals, things like television remote controls, which are infrared. Then we have microwaves. Next, we have the visible spectrum of light we can all see. And then moving to the right-hand side, so we've got shorter, more intense radiation waves. We have ultraviolet rays, which are these invisible rays that come from the sun. And finally, on the very far right, we have X-rays, and gamma rays. 5G for our cellular devices is on what's called the millimeter wave spectrum, and that's at its most powerful. This falls between infrared, so your TV remote control, and microwaves. 5G is much faster than previous cell phone signals, and these operated on a lot of lower frequencies, radio waves. Why do we need new frequencies? Well, the answer to that is Demand. More people have multiple devices and they're demanding fast signals and fast download speeds. And it's really difficult to cram more things into existing space. So you have to open new space up so that you can keep up with the demand for faster speeds with more devices coming online all the time. Because these new waves are a lot more intense because they're shorter in length, a lot of people believe they're harmful because they're edging on being microwaves. They think that somehow we're going to end up being cooked or have our DNA unraveled. Now, for this to happen, the atoms would have to be impacted by a wave that is strong enough to remove an electron. This kind of radiation does exist. It's called ionizing radiation. And those are X-rays, gamma rays. They fall into that category. And that's why radiographers stand behind those thick shields when they're performing scans all day long, why pilots have their flight times limited because they're being exposed to more radiation from the sun in the upper atmosphere, and why scientists who work with nuclear energy have to wear special monitors. Radio waves, cell phone signals, infrared signals, and even microwave signals are not ionizing. They are in fact called non-ionizing radiation and simply just don't have enough energy to be able to displace an electron from an atom. They do, however, have enough energy to make atoms vibrate and this can cause heating. This is how your food gets hot in the microwave. So standing very close to a huge high-powered radar, for example, could cause severe burns. But this type of energy is not emitted by cell phone towers, even 5G on the millimeter wave spectrum. Some studies have shown increased temperatures in the brain and body when using cell phones, so the EMF from cell phones. However, the participants that were affected by this heating were older, which meant that they had thinner skin and also differentials in the blood flow. Now, the International Agency for Cancer, which is part of the World Health Organization, has listed EMFs as class 2B, which means possibly carcinogenic. However, also listed as class 2B carcinogens are baby powder, aloe vera, coffee, and pickled vegetables like kimchi and sauerkraut. 
These aren't quite as dangerous as class 2A carcinogens, which include working as a barber, working night shift, eating bacon and steak, and having glass ornaments in the home. Or even the very top tier, category 1 carcinogens of sunlight, wood dust, and alcohol. So I hope you're seeing what I'm saying, which is that it's easily to, to be scared when you read a headline such as cell phone signals classed as possible carcinogen, until you then have a look at the items that are listed as more dangerous and realize that you expose, expose yourself to them almost daily without any fear whatsoever. I certainly don't see fitness influencers selling me a vibrating box to nullify the dangers of my pulled pork sandwich. And that's because it's easier to be afraid of that which you cannot see. In fact, such is the fear around EMF and 5G that many people are developing really bad anxiety symptoms and claiming to have electromagnetic sensitivity, reporting symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, sleep issues, and even skin issues when exposed to levels of radiation, which in fact are far below any kind of threshold. And in studies done on such patients, they were actually unable to distinguish when they were being exposed to EMFs and when they weren't. And in Taiwan, the number of patients reporting this illness has actually decreased since 2013, in spite of the number of cell phones and usage of Wi-Fi increasing. This has led to electromagnetic sensitivity being classed as a phobia, and patients are showing great recovery using cognitive behavioral therapy. However, this EMF-sensitive market has given rise to pseudoscientific devices being peddled by many fitness influencers. So it's best to remember that EMF exposure is totally unavoidable, even if you wear a tinfoil suit and helmet, because since the beginning of the universe, stars such as our sun have been emitting EMFs. We know this because we can see the sunlight. Wi-Fi routers, cell phone signals, microwave ovens, power lines, televisions, smartwatches, remote controls are all emitting EMFs. All of them are non-ionizing and incapable of changing your DNA. If you tried to avoid EMFs, you'd end up very stressed all the time because it's impossible. And as far as energy goes, sunlight has more energy and is classed as more carcinogenic than anything you have in your home technology-wise. In the U.S., if you were concerned, there are currently no federal guidelines on EMF exposure, but some states have introduced their own guidelines. There are no federal restrictions on this because the Environmental Protection Agency has reviewed available data and included that the levels of EMFs that we're exposed to currently are not a risk to human health. The EPA has a dose calculator online where you can work out your annual dose of ionizing radiation, something you should definitely be concerned with, because just like Icarus, if you fly too close to the sun, you may end up with severe health problems. If you have a training question, are looking for individual training program design, or just want to say hi, head over to the Get Fit Guy Facebook page or send me an email at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Get Fit Guy is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Adam Cecil, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchins, and Davina Tomlin. I'm your host, Kevin Dunn. If you have a question for me, leave me a voicemail at 510-353-3104 or send me an email at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. For more information about the show, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes in your podcast app. 